My name is Eddie. I live in New York City. East Harlem, to be exact. Here's where I go to school, PS72. School's tough, but it's a lot more fun ever since I got a teacher named Miss Tolliver. Miss Tolliver makes us keep a journal. I want you to write about what you learned today. I took the idea and ran with it. My mom has lots of names for this mess, but I call it my files. Lately, my life has gone to the dogs. Well, not really. I guess it only seems like it did. Anyway, it all started last week when I agreed to babysit Hector, my Aunt Rose's dog. Oh, hi, Eddie. Come on in. I am late. Oh, my goodness. Come here. Yeah, remember to feed Hector twice a day. If you don't feed him in the morning when you get up, he gets really cranky by the afternoon. Oh. And you have to walk him twice a day, too. Remember, there are a zillion dogs out there. So keep him on the leash. Take pictures of Hector. Oh, Eddie. Don't feed him chili dogs again, OK? All right, big boy, you're going to be OK as you are. Thanks, Eddie. Really appreciate it. At first, I wasn't too sure about Hector, but now I realize that he's pretty special. Hector isn't just your everyday dog. He's more like a friend. Now, if only he could talk. Maybe he could have helped me with my assignment in Ms. Tolliver's class. Miss Tolliver isn't here today. I am the queen of Egypt. <laughs> then the queen told us a story about her royal cats. So they eat lots and lots of cat biscuits. And her royal cat food Connors, who didn't keep very good count. And so I fired them all. So today, I'd like you to help me estimate how many cat biscuits are in my bin? What a way to start a math class. We had a wide range of estimates. 100,000, 10,000, 80,000, 20 million. 20 million? You all gave me these estimates. And I'm not still quite sure whether you are actually close. So I brought some things to make a better estimate. I'm going to give it was you just what we needed. More cat biscuits, cat biscuits and, and little bins. Now, how do you think you can use your bin and this bin to make a better estimate? Everybody had their own method of estimating. Some did it the old-fashioned way. Charles went the high-tech route. That's a good idea. Good, I like that. OK. Table three tried group counting. <laughs> Jeanette delegated responsibility to her partners. Now, what are you doing? You're doing something different than nobody else. Brandon used the little bin in the big bin trick. You fit more inside? Soon, everybody realized he had a good idea. So can you estimate on that? In our own roundabout way, we finally came up with some pretty good estimates. I came out with 2,760. 1,000. 3,000. So how many cat biscuits do you think were in the bin? All this time, you've had the answer in front of you. So Ms. Tolliver the pulled a fast one on us. The answer had been on the board the whole time. 
It was in a secret Egyptian number code that we had to figure out. You will now know how many cat biscuits are in my bin. Figure it out. Ooh. I got it. And the answer was... 4,263. 4,263. Who had the best estimate here? All right, Pedro, let's give Pedro's table. Good, good guy. Okay, your strategy worked, okay. We learned a lot about estimating that I never knew before. But it wasn't over yet. Estimate. You love to have work over the weekend. So I'm gonna have a few people to be my special helpers. Kia, I want you to find out approximately how many apartments we have in New York City. Brandon, your job will be to estimate the number of sneakers that we have in New York City. And Eddie, you have to find out how many dogs we have in New York City. So that's how this dog stuff got started. So I hit the streets, counting. And I had no idea what I was getting myself into. Everywhere I looked, there was nothing but dogs. And more dogs, and more dogs, and more dogs. And people talking about dogs. Dog food? No way. I gotta go down 82nd Street to get dog food. Give me a break. Last night, they broke into my car, they took my stereo and like six CDs of mine. Oh man, that's a doggy dog world out there. I couldn't believe it, man. Oh. Just like two minutes, that I was going gone. to the dogs. In my mind, all I could hear was, Eddie, you have to find out how many dogs, how many dogs, 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 dogs. It was a lot tougher than I thought. But I knew I'd be in the doghouse with Miss T if I didn't come up with a good estimate. I was beginning to wonder if I was headed down the wrong path. So I stopped by Vincent's to get some film and some advice. Eddie, it's just not practical to count every dog in New York City. Did you see the papers today? There's a report from the mayor's office about uh, subway commuters. Do you think that the mayor went down there into the subway and counted each and every one of those commuters? Of course not, he doesn't have time for that. What about astronomers? Do you think they sit up at night gazing at the stars through their telescopes, counting them? Nonsense. Eddie, do you actually think they count the number of raisins in Raisin Bran? And what about the waters in the Hudson? You think they go Sometimes down Vincent has a lot to say. Bailing? Then he's okay. What they do, Eddie, is they estimate. They take what they know and they make a smart guess. I wouldn't be much help with you with the dogs anyway, Eddie. I'm a cat person. This is Dr. Della. She's a veterinarian, an animal doctor. She wants to care of Hector after I fed him too many chili dogs. Anyway, she has her own clinic in Brooklyn. Okay, come on in. We do a lot of estimating and scheduling appointments. She's in the mail, right? We have to estimate how many pets we can see in a given amount of time. So Shelly has been rubbing her eyes, huh? Mm-hmm. We also order a lot of medicines here. And all you have to do is put one drop in. See how quick that was? We really have to make accurate oh, estimates in what we use so that we don't have medications wasting on our shelves. You got your perfect checkup. When you have your own business, and it's something that you've achieved, and you're there, and you're the boss. So it's a real, it's a real good feeling. Thank you, Dr. Oh, you're welcome. A-okay. I've got a whole file on people who work with animals. And Dr. Detla, she's right at the top. This is Johnny. He's from East LA, California. He lives in our building and works on his bikes in the basement. He has a job as a bike messenger. During the day, he rides all over the city delivering important stuff to people in offices. At night, he goes to college. Anyway, I told him about Dr. Detler. Marion, that's a cool job, Eddie.
couldn't help you with the dogs, though, huh? That's a tough one. You know, in my uh, zoology class, we were studying about the rainforest in South America. And you know, there's 10 to 100 million species down there. Most of them are insects. How are you going to count them all? I, I, imagine counting every mosquito in um, the Amazon. Well, that's a major estimation problem, Eddie. Why don't you hand me that wrench over there while I kill these bugs? My name is Jan Dietrich, and I grow bugs. We grow good bugs that attack bad bugs. Moths are bad bugs. And if something doesn't destroy a moth egg, then it's going to hatch into a caterpillar and start chewing on leaves, nuts, fruit, and so on. And nobody wants, you know, like a wormy apple. So she has these tiny wasps that do the job. And they're called the micro wasp. And those little wasps lay their eggs inside of the moth eggs and another wasp comes out rather than a caterpillar. I thought dogs were rough, but can you imagine counting bugs? In this one room here, we can grow millions and millions of these moths. It looks like sandpaper, but it actually has approximately 100,000 moth eggs. Normally, a bag like this will hold a gallon of ladybugs, which is 72,000. Everything I've learned has helped me, you know, do what I want to do now. Final note. Don't study bug file before dinner. People for the longest time thought that bats were evil creatures and they tried to get rid of them. But they're probably one of the most useful animals on the planet. They pollinate flowers. You have a bat about as big as your thumb that can eat five, six hundred insects in an hour. It's almost unreal to think about the planet without bats. We wouldn't be able to survive without them. I study bats. That's all I wanted to do since I was a little kid. Some people want to be firemen, policemen. I, I want to study bats. For the most part, you're going to find bats hanging on the walls. They're either upside down or they're laying flat against it on the sides. So they'll actually roost on top of each other. You know, you'll have a layer of bat here, then more bat here, more bat here, more bat here. And so you can have as many as probably four or five hundred per square foot. So you multiply that by the number of square feet and you have a good estimation of how many bats are in the cave. You gotta keep count. You gotta see if they're going extinct. How can we save them if they are? It's my job, but I don't call it work. I mean, you have fun. I love being outdoors, and I love bats, and there's lots to do out there, and I'd like to uh, do my part. That guy knows exactly what he wants to do. I'm not sure what I want to do when I grow up. That's why I keep my files. So there I was, on the bus, still counting dogs. What a nightmare, 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 nightmare. We interrupt this program for a special news report. Eddie, age 90, who has been counting dogs for 79 years, has lost count.
Sources say he was only hours away from finishing an assignment he started in the sixth grade. We'll have live coverage later tonight. Now, back to our program. Excellent, excellent. Get the Read all about in the day's time. Counting dogs just wasn't going to cut it. So I started to think about what everyone had been saying. People can't always count things, especially when you're dealing with big numbers. It's like Ms. T and Vincent said, they estimate. They make a smart guess. Okay, over the weekend, some of you were given special assignments to find out some estimates about New York City. Brandon, I'd like you to tell us what was your estimate for the number of pairs of sneakers in New York City and explain to us how you came up with that number. My estimate was 21 million because if there's 7 million people in New York City, and I figured they had three pairs of sneakers because one for sports, one for playing outside, and one for school. And if you just multiply by three to 7 million, and you get 21 million. Good for you, Brandon. Okay, that was a nice job. Okay, now, Eddie, I'd like you to tell us, how did you come up with the number of dogs in New York City? Talk about pressure. But after all that I've been through, it really was pretty easy. First, I checked out my apartment building, and I figured out there's about one dog for every 20 people. Then, my dad told me that the population of New York City is around 7 million. All I had to do was divide 7 million by 20, and I came up with my estimate. 350,000 dogs in New York City. Great, Eddie. 350,000. That's a wonderful estimate. Now, Kia, would you like to explain to us how you came up with the estimate? I don't think Hector cares how many dogs there are in New York City. And I gotta admit, I'm a little burned out on dogs myself. But I did learn a few things about bugs and about bats. How important it is to know how to estimate things. Anyway, I guess it's time to close the files. I have a feeling tomorrow's gonna be a big day.